Hello and welcome to another episode of the Oxford Online Maths Club. My name is James and you're watching live from Oxford as we're joined together today to do a little bit more maths. How are you doing? How are you? Um, great to have you with us today. Um, great to see you. Um, today, um, I've said in chat already before we went live, uh, today the plan is to draw some shapes. Uh, and do some vector calculus. Uh, so we're going to see if we can make that work. I've got this sort of slightly too ambitious plan for what we're doing uh, later on. Let's just check all the stream settings and make sure we're doing everything good. Uh, question in chat, am I doing the Birmingham UCAS event? I think I'm not doing the Birmingham one. I was down for one of them, I can't remember which one. Um, I, I've been to the Birmingham one before. It's really good fun. You're going to have a great time. Um, try and find the Oxford desk and say hi to whoever, whoever's on the Oxford desk. Um, good stuff. Um, there's a question about GCSEs in chat. Um, only one, one, and the rest we use. Those are pretty. Um, I, something's happened in your GCSEs there. There must be a reason why that's happened. Uh, if I get A star, A star, A star, and A levels, also the normal GCSE. So it's probably like a predicted grade. If you're predicted A star, A star, A star, that's quite a lot. That's like a more recent achievement um, to go from. It'd be quite a lot, I think, to go from that G, those GCSEs to A star, A star, A star. Might be a sort of hypothetical question. Hi to Ali uh, in chat. Hi to Magnus, who's just joined us as well. Um, if you would like to join chat as well, if you're watching live, then you can do so over at vvox.com slash, oh my word, what's the event code? It's 124835828. It's on the screen below me, but I can't see that. You can see that, but I can't. Hi to Harriet. Um, good to see you again. It's nice to recognise names. Harriet, we, we, we did the pasta book a little bit. Um, we looked at a little bit of pasta book. Um, we were a bit worried we were going to get banned for copyright, so we didn't look at all of it. Um, but we, we did we did a little bit of pasta book. Um, so there'll be um, yeah, we might do a bit of Q and A today at the end. Um, might do a bit of chat. Um, last week I was doing some Q and A, and it was getting more and more off topic and more and more rambling. And then my internet died, and it just cut in the middle. Oh, I didn't say goodbye. Uh, so sorry about that. <laughs> hi to Ali as well. Um, hi. I oh, was that a different. Uh, could be another Ali. I'm aware we've got at least two Ali's in chat. So hi to both both of the Ali's as well. Um, also hi to Zoe if you're watching. Um, Zoe's a new member of staff in the outreach team at the maths department and said that she might be watching tonight because uh, <laughs> she's joined our team. Um, hi to Kalamira. Um, and Harriet, yeah, Harriet has seen the pasta book bits, but wasn't here live. Uh, it was, it was a bit of a strange one. Um, hi to both the alleys. There we go. The alleys. This is evidence that there's more than one alley, right? It's like um, when you try to do a uniqueness proof to prove that something's unique, you assume that there are, are two, and then show that uh, they're the same. We can't do that because we've got more than one alley. That made sense to me in my head. Um, right. <laughs> what on earth am I doing today? Let's see. Working out if I'm moderating chat. Uh, I think I've got a student coming along as well to moderate chat. We'll see how that goes. Dealing with having too many files open at the same time. You can't see this because the screen is currently ha, ha, a square. A slightly wonky square. Can I fix that? There we go. It's not bad. Oh, look, there we go. Both alleys have now acknowledged the other alley. It could just be, you know, one alley going backwards and forwards in that way that I sometimes believe that chat is sometimes believe that chat is exactly one person doing all of the different voices um, one big hive mind um, it's something I like to imagine sometimes um, okay so um, I've got something that you can try at home as a kind of maths thing um, I'm gonna have a go at it live um, you're welcome to try it at home there's some variations you can try at home as well um, so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna try and solve some maths I've promised a vector calculus which is quite a big promise um, to analyze what's going on. Um, yeah, and how are your exams going, everyone? Um, somebody's reminded me that it was uh, step two today. Um, so, you know, slightly too late for me to say good luck with step two, because you did step two if you did step two. Um, but uh, yeah, how did that go, if that happens today? Okay, shapes. Um, this is a really nice shapes problem. Uh, the idea is that we're going to do, to, yeah, we're gonna do some, we're gonna draw some lines and get some curves. Um, there are several different ways that I've seen to do that. Um, I've seen um, that thing where you, you mark points down the sides and you join them up in a particular way and you get a curve. Um, some people might have seen that before. Um, something like that going on. Um, that's not what we're doing today. It's a different method of drawing lines and getting, drawing straight lines and getting curves. Uh, good luck in your maths exam, Magnus. You see, I'm on time to say good luck, good luck to Magnus. He's watching live. Um, and Alfie's doing the UCAS application at the moment. Um, there we go. 
Are vectors always straight lines? That's a good idea. So position vectors, when you say where something is, you're usually describing where it is in terms of a straight, displace, straight line displacement from the origin. But what is a vector? It's sort of the displacement from the start to the finish, um, irrespective of the journey that you took along there, I, I think. Um, so there's something going on there. Uh, yeah, and there's some sort of sort of memes developing in chat, which I quite I quite I'm quite fond of a good meme. So I'm tempted to do 53 GCSEs, but 30. <laughs> um, I sometimes I worked out you can do quite a lot of different GCSEs. There's quite a lot that exist. Okay, I promise straight lines. Let's go. Um, uh, the thing you're supposed to imagine is that at the four corners of the square there are dogs, um, four dogs, and I don't know if you've seen dogs in the park, but the dogs in the park tend to run towards each other. Um, what you're imagining is that the dog at the top right corner has just seen the dog at the bottom right corner, the dog at the bottom right corner has just seen the dog at the bottom left corner, the dog at the bottom left corner has just seen the dog at the top left corner, and the dog at the top left corner has just seen the dog at the top right corner. They've seen each other in this cycle. Um, and they're going to start running towards each other. Um, now the dogs are not running to where the not running to where the dog is going to be, they're going to run directly at the dog they've just seen. Um, and we're going to find out what happens. Yeah, I've said some confident things about displacement there, um, but who knows? And hi to CRM as well, and uh, Raphael, good, well, well, I hope the Mate level, yeah, went well once ago. Hi to SV as well. Is displacement ever curve? I sort of think it doesn't matter whether it's a line or a curve. It's uh, sort of not the journey, it's all about the... Not the journey, it's all about the, all about the destination. That's not, the, that's not the moral of the story, is it? Right, okay, um, here's how we're going to do it. So the dogs are running, um, I'm going to move them one centimetre and then reassess. So the dog sort of earnestly charges over here one centimetre this way. This one charges one centimetre this way. I mean, maybe this is a scale map or something. Um, the dogs are actually not on a 15, square, 15 centimetre square square. Uh, one centimetre this way and one centimetre this way. Okay, so so far they've just run along the edges of the park, which is a square. Um, but they're still going to try and run towards each other. So this dog here is still trying to run towards the dog, and now that one's moved a bit, so it's going to move this way. So I'm going to move it one centimetre again, but this time at a sort of angle. One centimetre again because it's running at the same speed, but now in a different direction. Okay? Here we go. Oh! Raphael suggested a sort of curve in chat. Um, it's, a, it's a good guess. Um, I think it's not the right answer, but I think you'll take that. I think you'll take that in the right way, because <laughs> I've got a feeling it was just a guess. And there's nothing wrong with guessing. Right? How am I doing? I'm got to lose track, not lose track of which dog is chasing which dog. But they are not clever animals in this in this um, exercise that we're doing. They're just charging towards each other like this. Oh, vector line which was in the form of a normal vector line, but instead of having a basic lambda constant, it's like a quadratic for each part, like a curve shape. Okay, so that's using vectors to describe where something is, but as you vary a parameter, that goes through different things. Ah, no. 3D vectors in chat as well. This is exciting. Right, okay, I'm going around again, moving all the dogs uh, one centimeter as they go. Uh, and as you see, they're moving. So this dog is curving away from the edge of the park because its target that it's going for is also moving. You might already be wondering, well, you might be wondering what this has got to do with maths, uh, and there might be some maths coming. Uh, but you might also be wondering how you would set this up as a maths problem. Uh, how you would uh, parameterize this or set up. Where am I aiming towards? I've done two steps, and I want to aim towards where it was, I think. That one, aiming towards there. I might have done that wrong with the last one. Yeah, I think I did that wrong last time. Okay, I'm doing my last dog wrong. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, update, trying to update all of the dogs at once, which is a little bit confusing, keeping track of all the dogs. I still want to move all of them, move all of them at the same time. Um, doesn't it matter what angle you curve them in at? So I'm, I'm not setting the angle, I'm just getting the, the angle is defined by the dogs. Um, the dogs are always running, so this angle that I'm doing, I'm making sure to line up this dog, aiming at this dog down here. So I'm taking this top right dog, which has moved a bit, and it's aiming towards bottom right dog, which has moved a bit, along that edge of the park, park and it's going to move one centimetre in that direction. What's gradually happening is that as that dog moves, 
This line is curving more and more uh, because the dog it's running to has also moved. I'm going to keep doing this. Um, I don't know if I should be doing two centimetre steps or something. This is taking me quite a while. Uh, but maybe that just gives us more time to think about the maths. How are we doing over there in chat? Oh, you're waiting for the one... Here's one I made earlier. When I originally pitched that show, so here's one I made earlier is a line from Blue Peter. Um, when I originally pitched this show, the idea was, let's just do Blue Peter, but all of the items are maths. Um, yeah, so if you're doing this at home, if you're doing this at home, this is, do try this at home. Um, if you're doing this at home, you've got to remember when you get around to the last dog, not to point it towards where this dog, the first dog currently is, but it's running towards where the first dog sort of was. I'm sort of updating all of them at once. Which is more fiddly to do than I'd, I'd realised when I practised this. Uh, there we go, so that one's going there. This one's going here. Like this. Really starting to think I should have done two centimetre steps because I'm going to be here forever. Uh, so, all the way through this season we've been thinking about how you can take uh, ideas that you see on the stream and adapt them. So take maybe classic maths puzzles and adapt them to other settings. Um, here you might be wondering already uh, how can we vary this? I've been talking about doing one centimetre steps or two centimetre steps which kind of affects the resolution of the shape that we get out in that kind of slightly calculus themed way. Um, but we could also think about changing the initial shape or changing the um, speed that the dogs go at compared to the size of the shape. Not that one, aim for the previous one for the last dog. Oh, that's going to catch me out a few times. There we go. What's happening? Okay, how are we doing? Uh, they've spiralled in a little bit as they go. Um, yeah, you could think about doing infinitely small steps. That chat message has not quite happened yet. Oh, yeah, this is a look. Um, why square first? Maybe we should do a squ oh, triangle. Sorry, I wasn't keeping up with chat there. Someone says we do a triangle first. We could do a triangle first. The the answer to that is that squares, you're not going to like the answer to that, the answer is that the square was easier for me to draw on this piece of paper compared to an equilateral triangle because I'm lazy um, and also that the square was easier to put into some computer code which I'm going to show you in a moment because I'm lazy. Uh, lazy enough to write computer code but not lazy enough to, uh, sorry, <laughs> not too lazy to write computer code but lazy enough to write bad computer code. That's always the way. Um, they're going quite well at the moment, they're going inwards. Uh, what happens if there are more dogs? More dogs! Always the answer, isn't it? More dogs. See what goes on. Um, so you could put more dogs in uh, equally spaced around a square, or you could space them around a pentagon instead, if you like. Um, equally spaced around a pentagon, maybe at the corners of a pentagon. Um, I think someone else in there said square first, then triangle, then pentagon, then 3D. 3D is actually quite interesting because... It's not obvious how to generalise this to 3D, whether the dogs should still be dogs or whether they should be higher dimensional things than they are currently. Um, that was a very strange thing to say. Um, you can put this in 3D just by throwing the dogs into 3D space, giving them little jetpacks and asking them to charge towards the next dog in sequence, which might be, you know, you've got to set up, when you set up your cycle of dogs, you've got to say which one's running towards which one. This is going quite well, I think. I'm, I'm starting to become pleased that I've done one centimetre steps again because it's giving me a nice sort of relaxing thing to do while I chat to chat and uh, I'm going to get quite nice curved lines out of this. <laughs> because it's slightly, slightly... I do wonder whether this makes good TV or not, whether I should have... I'm going to finish, I'm going to finish. If anybody's hoping that I skip to a completed one, bad luck. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. Um, feels like the Chrome logo, something sort of spiralling inwards. Yeah, okay. Um, I like how that's going. These, to me at the moment, look a bit like quarter circles. Um, they're not quarter circles. That would have been a, would have been a guess. Uh, there should probably be flies in 3D. That was a good idea. I actually prefer dogs with backpacks, but you know, you do you. Uh, yeah, flies in 3D would be a classic thing to do. Uh, like that. This one goes over here. Like that. This one goes over here, like that. This one goes over here, like that. There they go. Okay. So I'm going to speed, speed run it, please. Yeah, I, if I stopped talking, I could do it much faster, I think. Uh, it's going quite well. I think I might have gone wrong at some point because they're not quite doing what I wanted them to do, but you know, this 
something nice going on. I really think I might find that fourth dog wrong. Yeah, so there's a nice symmetric thing that should be happening, of course. Oh, mathematicians and symmetry, name a more iconic duo, right? Um, which they started square, nice and symmetric, and they should be staying square. Well, I think I've missed, missed one of the points there somewhere. Uh, the last, last one you drew at the top was drawn to the wrong point. Ah. Oh. Okay, if you're playing along at home, you can, <laughs> you can keep going. Um, I think it is time for me to switch to my computer simulation of this. Yeah, so 3D case is interesting for, because of what SV says here, that um, it's not obvious what order they should go in. If you throw random, random flies into space, you also need to declare which one's chasing which. Um, so uh, up to you, you're the designer, you set up the problem, you can go for it. Um, yeah, it feels recursive. Uh, let's get this in there. Yeah, it feels recursive. Um, at each step we have a new square that is, I would say, uh, a scaling of the original square. That's true, and that's a great insight into the problem. Not true for what I've drawn on paper quite. I've made a couple of mistakes. Um, <laughs> we've got a pencil recommendation in chat. Today's stream is sponsored by the... <laughs> it's not sponsored. Not, not an ad. Right. Um, yeah, you can pick a... Right, okay, fine. There are, there are ways you might choose who's chasing who, but it is up to you as the artist here to decide which dog's chasing which. Um, as I keep going in, this square's going to get smaller and smaller, and a sort of mathematician question we could ask is, do they keep spinning around forever, or do they all crash into each other in the middle after some amount of time? Um, and that's not going to be obvious on my bit of paper, because I think I'm doing it wrong. Uh, but maybe I, should, maybe I shouldn't give up. Maybe I should just keep going. I'm going to keep going and see what happens on my bit of paper. You can tell because as I'm measuring with the ruler, I can see that it's no longer a square. This is quite suspicious somehow. Oh well. You know what they say. It's life. Anything could happen. Woo. And that one. It's the last one where I'm trying to point it to keep it the same as the others, to keep it fair, I'm trying to point it at the one before last of the fourth dog. And I'm also starting to lose track of which one is the fourth dog as I go around, which could really cause problems. Here we go. So it's getting quite small now. These are called pursuit, pursuit curves, if you want to look them up, which I think I saw fly by in chat at some point. I'm not giving up, okay, I'm not giving up. Chat, chat doesn't want me to give up, so I'm not giving up. Especially after we got this far, right? It's just problematic that those two are getting very close together already, and I don't really want them to. Here we go. Yes, that fourth dog is in the wrong place. See, if I make a mistake on the fourth dog, then it propagates backwards to the third dog, because the, then the fourth, if the fourth dog's in the wrong place, the third dog ends up in the wrong place as well. We're almost there, I think. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Well, for me, I'm going to get one centimetre squares going on. I'm going to cheat a little bit, there we go. I bring this one down here. Oh, that's not way down that bad at all. Let me bring this one across. Ah, a little square in the middle. Um, so my dogs are now in a little square in the middle, and they're going to keep running around that square. Yeah, okay. James has a PhD, but can't do dot to dot. Lol. <laughs> that is, there's, the, there's, the, there's the comment of the day. Let's have that one. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So someone in chat has referred to the, quote, Xeno situation. Yeah, let's talk about the Xeno situation. <laughs> so the Xeno situation, this is quite a highbrow comment as well. What? Look, a, an insulting joke about me and dot the dot puzzles right next to a philosophical conundrum comment. Ah, oh, brilliant. I'm, and I've read both of them out. Um, so the, the Xeno comment is a reference to um, the problem with the tortoise and the, the, tortoise and the runner, which is a, a really famous paradox. And the idea is that a runner if it gives a tortoise a head start, can't catch the tortoise because the tortoise runs to where the, the, the runner runs to where the tortoise was, but the tortoise has moved. So the runner runs, runs a bit more to where the tortoise is now. But while he's doing that, the tortoise moves again. And then that happens again and again and again, um, which is a philosophical conundrum um, that is partly explained by, well, geometric series, all of that happens in finite time. So there's this question, yeah, it's Achilles chasing a tortoise in the kind of ancient Greek version ancient Greek theming. Um, so the punchline there, I suppose, is that infinitely many things happen in finite time. Um, the runner runs maybe one mile, and then half a mile, then a quarter of a mile, then an eighth of a mile, then a sixteenth, and a one over thirty-two, and 
that's a semi-famous series, 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth adds up to exactly t miles, which he does in, in finite time. Yeah, and the open day, uh, James Studd, Maths and Philosophy, there's a video on this YouTube channel that goes into lots more detail about that philo philosophical thing. Um, if you search on this channel for Infinity Machines, um, Infinity Machines is a really good talk on this channel uh, by James Studd, uh, another James. Um, yeah, it, it's something to do with limits. Limits are maybe more complicated than, than you think. Um, yeah, so in my thing here, what's actually happened? And this is a thing about the difference between modelling and reality. Oh, come on YouTube, we can do this. The difference between modelling and reality is that um, in reality the dogs don't move one centimetre at a time, they move smoothly and they update as they're going round. Um, they we had a little bit of lag there, a little bit of lag, I think we got through it. Ooh. Um, so in reality the dogs would move very smoothly and nicely, um, whereas here my dogs are moving in big chunky discrete steps, um, which means that they end up in this kind of little spiral in the middle where they're standing on the corners of a square facing each other one centimetre apart, they all run to, the where, <laughs> run to exactly where the other one was standing and then update, rotate 90 degrees and run again, um, which is not quite the, you know, not quite the the feeling that I wanted for the problem. Um, if they all move to the same place, then the problem breaks after that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, if uh, yeah, so if the dogs move to where the move to where the dogs were aiming for, then it's a different problem uh, with a slightly different solution. Um, I want to switch to show you a computer simulation of this, um, which I did very clumsily. So we're going to have a look at that now. My computer doesn't like that. Uh, there we go. Let's see if I can broadcast this. Um, oh, it dropped another 100 frames on that. <laughs> it was worth it. Drop 100 frames, go for it. Oh, have I still got the internet? We're good, we're good, we're good. Yeah, simulation with smaller movements. There's a request in chat. Very nice. Oh, and it's exactly what we're going to do now. Um, so I've got some very clumsy code that I'm going to run that is going to do the same thing, but it's a computer and it doesn't make so many mistakes as me. Um, and it does things very quickly, so it can do this with tiny steps for the dogs, chasing around like that, there it goes, inwards and inwards and inwards, so they spiral around getting uh, closer and closer and closer in there. Um, let's add a couple of steps on the end, this is very, very clumsy. Hey, uh, Prisma's here. Um, Prisma's in chat, moderating chat, which is how messages can appear without me clicking on things, um, and also answer questions. Uh, good. Right, let's add a few more times in here because I'm not very happy with that. Let's add a couple more. Add a couple more. There we go. I just want the dogs to run a little bit more. There we go. Ah, oh, there we go. Again, I've crashed into the middle. Um, and because it's a computer, I can ask it to do silly things like uh, do twice as many steps that are half the big. And it will happily go off and do twice as many dots. And that might kill my computer. So in a minute, this might all disappear as those dogs spiral in towards us. Um, the code is very, very simple. Um, I've written it in MATLAB because that's the language that I speak in code. This is not a recommendation to do this in MATLAB. If you know anything about uh, getting computers to add numbers together, then you can do this. Um, so the code is, is very simple. It starts off it's keeping track of where the dogs are. Um, the code could be cleverer. It could keep track of one dog and remember that the dog's positions are just rotations of each other. But my code's stupid, it's keeping track of all four dogs. Um, it's keeping track of their positions, it's saving those numbers for where the positions are where the dogs are, and at each time, sort of time step, it's got a big loop, big for loop for time steps. Um, each, time it, it does, each time it does that, each time it's um, moving each dog. So it's reading off the positions of the dogs. From the positions, it's working out the displacement between that dog and the next one, it's using the difference between those numbers to work out the displacement. And now the dogs are supposed to move one unit, that's kind of fixed length. So it's taking that little vector, my code takes the little vector for which direction should the dog be going in, and divides it by the length of that vector, so that the dog moves a standardized unit, unit distance. Um, then it just moves a tiny bit. Um, it moves in that direction just a tiny bit, um, not one centimeter like, one, 0 0.0025 or something tiny, um, and it updates all the positions using that rule. Very simple rule for just add on 
add on a little bit in the right direction, like I was doing with the ruler. Um, and as the decisions then plot all of them as a scatter plot um, on top of the same graph, same graph axes, and then do the calculation again. So you're watching, you're actually watching my computer calculate as fast as it can for, <laughs> for the dogs. The code's not very good. Most of the time is spent, uh, most of the time is spent rotating things around. Uh, why not GNU Octave? Yeah, I know. It's because I've got access to MATLAB. Is there a, yeah, okay, okay. Um, ooh, what does Amelia say? Oh, yeah, I met Amelia at the Idol Lads Up. Oh, was that Prisma? Is that Sonny's Prisma? Oh, it was Amelia and Prisma. Ah, they're just talking to each other in chat. Ah, good stuff. Um, Octave is a little bit slower than MATLAB, maybe. I should obviously be doing this in Python. Yes, I know, I should do this in Python. Um, there is some MATLAB in the Oxford, Oxford Maths course. We currently teach people to use MATLAB. There's an idea that in a few years' time we might be teaching people to use Python instead of using MATLAB, maybe, or maybe both. Um, there is a bit of a blob in the middle. That's like my, um, it's the same idea as the, the big square that I got in the middle of my picture. It's a little square on the computer thing. Um, and I can make it smaller by getting the computer to do smaller steps. Um, a step is how far the dogs move in between pictures. Um, the code gets slower when it does that because it's it's thinking more and it's it's moving. You know, it's doing all the calculations, moving the dogs just a tiny bit. I do all the calculations, move the dogs just a tiny bit. Uh, yeah, the blob is is partly because of the thickness of the dogs and also because um, the the distance that's being moved in between the images, in between the steps, um, gives some resolution at the bottom. Uh, and Prisma is doing Matt and Phil and has kind of dodged some of the MATLAB. Their, their words, not mine. Uh, MATLAB is a little bit slow, but it's very, very easy. Don't judge me. Hey, look, okay, there's some code. Well, there's some pseudocode there. The new position is the old position, plus you need a displacement, but divide it by the magnitude. Uh, if, I made, if I made this in Python, I would use NumPy for doing all the actual, you know, find the length of a vector, Pythagoras square root stuff. I would use NumPy for that. And I would use matplotlib to draw the pictures, and that'd be it. And it'd be a good, I think, if you're beginner beginner level Python, then making this code to do that is something that you could have a go at. And everyone in chat is now talking about code again. Can I get a big square to show up like I did before? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Let's do that. So this, is, this, this is the one I did. There's the one I did on uh, more or less the one I did on paper, but done it in my computer in a fraction of a second. Yeah, yeah, fine, okay. Everyone, everyone's got their favourite chat languages in chat. Let's do the slow one again. Um, the nice thing about doing this in um, my computer is that I can change things. Um, this is maybe turning into a live code, live live coding sort of session. But something I want to do. This one's dreadfully slow. But cancelling this one and doing doing a faster one. There we go. Okay. So we could give it. If I was feeling brave, I would give it a triangle. Um, let's see if I can live code a triangle example. Ooh, I'm not feeling optimistic. Oh, do I want to do a triangle? I'll do a random triangle. Do a random triangle. That sounds, that sounds, that sounds good. Random triangle? There we go. Ah, yes, again. Okay. Random triangles are quite interesting. <laughs> so something different happens for triangles. There they go, the dogs. Okay. Something different happens with the triangles with the, the spirals are slightly different as the dogs run in. That's right, I've got it set up for random triangles, which is slightly different. Uh, random triangles are a bit interesting. Oh, that one was almost equilateral, so something happened there. Um, in general here, there's something really interesting going on. So that was quite a flat triangle, that random triangle. Can you see the first dog ran doors there and turned around really quickly as it chased this dog in, and this line is almost straight. So there's some sort of oh, same thing again. Maybe that's what random triangles look like. <laughs> run code, run code, run code. Oh, I quite like the random triangle mode. Don't think I did this enough. <laughs> triangles, yeah, okay. Uh, you see, somehow coding random triangles was much easier than coding equilateral triangles. Equilateral triangles are very fussy. You've got to tell them where to put the, you've got to tell them where all the corners are. Random triangles, very permissive. Oh, that was almost a straight line. Oh, that was complete chaos. Dogs everywhere, brilliant stuff. Uh, let's put it back to squares. <laughs> this is turning a little bit into what has James actually implemented in this code? What can we do? Uh, okay, squares. So, I kind of want to talk about the solution to the square problem. Um, they do all hit each other into the middle, or they all reach the middle 
in a finite amount of time, just like in the Zeno paradox, um, even though they're you know, chasing each other around and it feels like maybe that could last forever, um, if you do the differential equation version, they all spiral in. Um, the curves that are being drawn here, if you go to the full sort of continuous version and you set up a differential equation for what's going on, um, the curves um, are something called a logarithmic spiral um, or equiangular spiral. Um, there's a way for me to explain this in terms of this equiangular angular spiral. Um, what if you had infinitely many dogs on a circle? I think maybe they just run in a circle. Does that, does that satisfy you? Satisfy you? Tess, tell, right, right. Somebody already wants 4D in chat. Uh, could you make the random triangles into a screensaver? Uh, I don't know how screensavers work, but I don't think that would be... I think that would be the hard bit, finding out how triangles work, how um, screensavers work. Um, okay, so um, I want to try and convince you that these are equiangular spirals, whatever that is, in terms of me telling you what an equi equiangular spiral is, I think. Um, there's a hard bit to answer what's an equiangular spiral, um, but I'm going to try and convince you that it's one of those. That doesn't sound like a very good plan, does it? But I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, it's my stream. <laughs> Let's see, okay, okay, right. Um, so the setup that's going on here is that there are some dogs, and each dog is at, see them in a bit. Uh, the dog is at some position relative to the middle. This is the dog, um, relative to the middle, and it can see the next dog round which is 90 degrees away. So it's motion. Oh, is it, it's going, sorry, it's, uh, it's chasing the wrong way. Chasing the wrong way. Let's uh, flip it and reverse it. Uh, you didn't see this. This set always said dog, and this one always said next dog. Ooh. Okay, um, so the dog is over here. Its position is over here and it can see the next dog around here. So it's on some sort of curve coming in. And the property that the curve has is that a tangent to this curve, at this point, at this exact point, a tangent to that curve points towards the next dog. So that its motion along that curve is in the direction towards the next dog along. Um, <laughs> okay, um, where is that next dog? Well, there are some equal lines in here, there are some 45 degree angles. That tangent is at 45 degrees to the position of the dog. So let's say that again in slow motion. Um, if I think about the position of the dog, the direction of the dog is just 45 degrees away from, from that vector. Its position is here, and the direction is 45 degrees away. Um, that remains true as the dog runs in. That's true at every point on this curve. So at every point, the tangent makes some fixed angle to the position. Um, that's a really good definition for a curve. Um, in fact, the curve has quite a nice equation um, that you can write down with something called polar coordinates, um, if you've learnt about those in school. Um, there's a little bit of differential stuff that I'm skipping, some, some calculus, I suppose, to work out the equation there. Um, but the rule is that the angle for the tangent is the same wherever the dog is. Yes, yeah, so there's an equiangular curve. Um, it's a family of different curves. This one is the special 45 degree equiangular curve. Um, but there's a family of different curves that, that do this with different angles. I love this question here. Is it curve still equal angle if the angular is greater than less than 90 degrees? Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, equiangular just means um, that the angle is the same all the way around the motion. Um, if the dogs are on an equilateral triangle, which I'm too lazy to draw, um, then the angle numbers are all different, but the rule's the same. It stays as an equilateral triangle as the dogs come in. Um, and because it stays in an equilateral triangle, the angle between their position and their motion stays the same on the way in. The tangent and the position make this make a constant angle all the way in. 
That's what makes it an equiangular spiral. Um, there's a formula for those. It's beautiful. It's it's a it, it, you can think of it as the definition is equiangular on the way in. There's some calculus and some, some solution for what that curve is, um, but I, I like to think of it in terms of that definition. Um, pentagon, different angles, same idea. Um, you get a different equiangular spiral. Um, they're really nice. Um, there's confirmation in chat that these are called logarithmic spirals as well. Um, if you're interested in them, uh, there's stuff on Wikipedia, right? Um, and there's stuff out there for you to find out more about what that equation is. I'm kind of skipping them because last time I talked about polar coordinates on the live stream, uh, they were viewed as too difficult or too unfamiliar. So yeah, oh, Prisma's put an amazing summary in chat of what polar coordinates are. If we had this last time, then that'd be good. I'm gonna do it one more time, one more time. So we're exploiting the fact that the dogs, all four dogs lie on a square. Um, we've decided that they start on a square, in this, in this example on the board, they start as a square and by symmetry, they stay in a square on the way in because all the distances are the same and the angles are all the same, it's fine, it's still a square. Um, because of that, we know lots of angles. We know the angle between the dogs is 90 degrees and that means that if I draw in some square logic that we know that there are loads of 45 degree angles around just everywhere. Loads of them. Um, that means that in particular there's this relationship between where the dog is, it's over here, and what direction is it going in, it's going this way. You can work that out in terms of some complicated thing to do with coordinates or you can just say Oh, it's, it's sort of simple. It's 45 degrees away from um, where the dog is, the relationship between where it is and what direction it's going in. The direction means the tangent to the curve. Um, and that gives you a, a kind of really neat definition of the curve that it, we're interested in today, the curve where the tangent forms a constant angle with the position. Um, so yeah, um, so there is a formula for these which is on Wikipedia and is now also in chat. Uh, which is r equals e to the theta, which I think is correct, um, which tells you a lot of stuff. Once you've worked this out and once you've found the formula for that spiral, uh, then all sorts of stuff is true, um, and you can work out that they all crash into each other in some amount of time. Um, greater than 180 degrees spirals outwards, but all regular polygons won't have that. Yeah, so you can think about this family of... Yeah, it's to do with spiralling inwards and outwards. The outwards ones are sort of the same as the inwards ones, but backwards. <laughs> I think that probably only made sense to Jack. Um, okay, so this family called equiangular spirals. Um, yes, there it is. They would spiral outwards if they ran away from each other. Yes, if the dogs were scared of each other. If they were cats. Do cats do that? Um, what animals are scared of each other? There's a question for you. What animal is scared of, it sees the other one and runs away, so it does the spiral outwards with an angle of like, whoa, oh no, <laughs> massive angle. Um, I don't know what animal that is. Oh yeah, everyone in chat has worked it out. <laughs> it me. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, good stuff. Um, I promised them vector calculus, and that's because yesterday I got distracted by this problem uh, and I've been thinking back to this simulation because I've got it in my computer. Um, something I've been wondering about is a different extension to this problem. Um, people want to put more dogs in or go to higher dimensions because chat loves higher dimensions. Um, yeah, mathematics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Um, people want to go to higher dimensions. Um, but what I wanted to do was to think about breaking the symmetry. We tried those random triangles and they did something weird. Um, random triangles feels quite hard. Um, somewhere in between random triangles versus um, nice pretty square is our old friend the rectangle. Um, so, natural question, what happens if I put the four dogs, same rule as we started with, but if I put the four dogs at the corners of a, a rectangle? Uh, it's not obvious what will happen. Um, something we might hope is we might hope that while the square stayed as a square as the dogs ran in, so maybe a rectangle will stay as a rectangle as the dogs run inwards. Um, and to find out whether that's true, I put... Uh, yeah, so random quadrilaterals, I think it's too too hard to think about. I want to you know, try out... If you try, if you try random quadrilaterals, then loads of strange stuff happens. Um, the key to finding out um, why strange stuff is happening is to try and find the simplest example where strange stuff happens. 
which I think is rectangles. Here's a rectangle. Let's watch this happen. So there go the dogs. Uh, they're running in, and I don't know if you can see, but the positions <laughs> do something a little bit strange on the way in. Um, they definitely don't stay in a rectangle on the way through. Um, yeah, chat's going to catch up with me there. I have lost symmetry, so watch, watch them again. So now they're no longer in arranged in a nice rectangle. And they sort of, there's a bit near the end where they, the pairs kind of turn round on themselves. We're going to play it one more time. Um, here they come. Uh, so they're chasing each other and they meet the other ones and they tuck in really uh, behind and they all charge in towards the middle. And they all hit the middle. And it doesn't look like the same spiral um, that we got for the squares. So this is, this is different. It's, it's, um, because it's not random, I can run it again and again so I can watch it happen. And the same. Yeah, um, changing the speeds of the dogs is also interesting. Um, if you give the four dogs different speeds, then different things happen. Uh, regular versus non-regular polygons. There you go. This is this is the simplest non-regular polygon that I could think of. You might argue that a random triangle is of a simpler shape, um, but for me, this is a bit more controllable. Um, I can do things like change the uh, change the height, change the. I've been thinking of that as the aspect ratio, like on your phone screen, aspect ratio. And find out what happens if the dogs start further apart in their pairs. And it's sort of similar, but a little bit different. Oh, what would happen if the dogs slow down? Okay, if the dogs slow down, you can make them keep going forever. Like, properly forever for all time, if they slow down. Um, depending on how far, <laughs> depending on how much they slow down. Uh, they actually still go along equiangular spirals if they start on a square and they're all following the same rule and all running towards the next dog round. Um, because the rule about direction, if your rule about direction is the same and all the dogs are symmetrically, if they're all the same, then you still get that logic about the equiangular spirals. But the rate that they move along the spiral, something I didn't talk about, it's gonna, you could keep them going forever. It's like the meeting form with added time, says Prisma. Thanks, Prisma. Yeah. Uh, it is weird as well that the, the dogs... It sort of looks like the top right and the bottom left one are going to meet now, but then something else happens, right? They run past each other because they're not running towards each other. They're running towards the other one in the pair. Um, this one coming down here isn't running towards this, this one. It's running towards this one all the way down here. So these two dogs look like they're charging towards each other, but they actually miss each other because they're aiming for the other pair, which they then sort of catch up behind and spin around and end up doing this bit in the middle, which looks like a sort of straight line. I promised some vector calculus and I'm sort of running out of time, so I'm going to try and do that really quickly. I wanted to give you an idea about how how I decided to analyse this problem. Um, it's a little bit complicated, but I thought, you know, uh, recently we've had criticism that the live stream is too easy, um, so I thought I might show you a little bit of analysis of this problem. Don't worry, I'm not going to give you the full full answer. If you are interested in this problem and you want to try it yourself by writing your own code, then I encourage you to do that. And I'm going to give you some answers, but not all of the answers, for what's going on in this rectangle case. Okay, so the thing I noticed was as the dogs come in, if I stop them there, um, their positions are... Oh, thanks. There we go. Nice widescreen. Um, their positions aren't a rectangle anymore, but it is a parallelogram. Uh, because we've still got rotational symmetry by 180 degrees, yeah, please do code this up, by the way. Four dogs at random points on a circle, go for it. That sounds plausibly like you could code it. If I had 20 minutes, I would code, code that one. Um, okay, so I noticed that the dogs line are a parallelogram. Um, thinking about symmetries, that's to do with 180 degree rotations. Um, this line is parallel to this line. Anyway, um, so the dogs stay on a parallelogram, um, which helps me. Uh, does the point of convergence? It's not chaotic. It's it's um it's pretty deterministic and quite nice. Oh, with starting points being moved around, sensitivity. Oh gosh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, good question. Right, let's uh, let's do some vector calculus. So I've seen other people just solve this problem, by the way, and talk about uh, the positions of the dogs in terms of coordinates x and y. Um, I quite like vectors, so the thing that I've gone for is vectors um, for how to how to describe where these four dogs are. And here's my parallelogram to explain where the dogs are. I'm going to call the position of the bottom left one vector x, 
and I'm going to call the displacement off to that one vector a. So this one is at x plus a. And this one over here, I'm going to say is at x plus b. Okay, which might seem a little bit mad. Um, this vector then is parallelogram time. This is x plus a plus b. So if you've met vectors, adding together vectors means you put them tail to tip and you go along both of them. So there's x plus a and then plus b. These ones are parallel. Parallelogram. Okay, as soon as I saw the parallel parallelogram, I wanted to set up my vectors like this. Uh, I'm not going to share my code because I think that my code is bad and if you can, if you can, if you understand the problem, then you can type the code that I've got in not very much time. And it's probably good for you to type it because then you actually understand what it's, what it's doing. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, okay. So these are my positions of the dogs in terms of three variables, x for this bottom left one, a for the displacement here, and b for the displacement over to that one. What I really care about is a and b, these these vectors for the size of the parallelogram. I'm thinking about how that parallelogram deforms and how it um, how it squashes. I remember thinking about the angle theta. Constant angle inwards that the dogs travel at from the direction to the next dog, Finley. Finley, that sounds like an equiangular spiral. Um, again, sounds like a really good way of getting an equiangular spiral that the dogs miss by a fixed angle but you can run the angle argument from before again, I think you'll get a different equiangular spiral, depending on like 45 degrees plus Finley's theta or something. Anyway, um, good, right. Um, I've got a rule for how the dogs move. I'm starting to regret doing this at all. What was the quote before? This is a terrible idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, yeah, I'm, go I'm in now, this is happening. Um, because I'm using vectors, it's surprisingly nice to write, it's surprisingly easy to write down the rule for how the dogs move. Um, the dog at x, its velocity, which is the time derivative of its position, is something like the vector a for this displacement to the next dog, but divide that by the modulus of a because it's got uh, uh, a fixed speed. So I want the direction, but I don't want the magnitude of that vector. Um, I've also got this rule for how the next dog round moves. Um, this one moves at in direction b, but divide that by b. It's moving that way towards this dog up here. Um, oh, there's a great question. Is it still a logarithmic spiral if you have a pentagon, but the dog's head for the dog two points around? Yes, because I think that is a fixed angle sort of thing. I think that by some sort of pentagon logic, there's some angle to where that point is. Um, I don't know what the angle is, and I don't know what the spirals look like when that happens. I think it sort of just stays as a pentagon, but spirals at a different rate, because the dogs are aiming in a different direction, like a like a kind of Finley theta um, um, difference in where they're aiming. Isn't it good that once you've, once you've had the idea that it's a logarithmic spiral because it's fixed angle compared to their position, you can do all these different variants of the problem, where all these different variants of the problem where it's like, oh yeah, I just understand that, as a different logarithmic spiral. If you set up the differential equations and you solve the differential equations, I don't think you get the same understanding of what's going on. Um, you have to like solve them again, right? Um, this one is moving. I'm not just writing that vector stuff. I'm, I'm having a great time. Uh, yeah, so this is a over mod a. Uh, isn't that formula of a over mod a? That's a unit vector. Yeah, uh, that, that, is the, that is the unit vector in the direction of a which is the rule for how the dog moves. It wants to move along that vector in the, it, with a unit vector because it's got unit speed. A bit like moving one centimeter in that direction. I put my ruler along the vector, along the vector A, I put my ruler along the vector A to get the right direction, but I, I only measure out one centimeter. I measure one centimeter, the kind of unit vector thing to divide. So that's the rule for the dog. And you've seen this formula before, you're right. Um, this, is, this is a unit vector, it's the formula for a unit vector in that direction. I'm dividing by the magnitude so that I get a unit vector. The dog's, the dog's velocity doesn't depend on how far away the dog is. The dog's velocity is always top speed, one. Um, so that I'm, I'm, in my formula, I'm dividing by the magnitude of A so that I keep the information about the direction, but the distance is not important. It doesn't matter how far away that dog is. I'm just gonna move at uh, speed, constant, constant speed, top speed, dog speed, one. Um, so divide, divide, I'm dividing down. Okay, 
uh, two point away dogs just lead to joining diagonals. Yeah, yeah, you're joining joining diagonals in some sort of five pointed star shape, and there's some angles involved in there. It's all very all very good. Yeah, uh, mod can also be mod can also mean modular arithmetic. Here I'm using mod as shorthand for the modulus, so not modulo, the modulus, the size of a vector. Sometimes called the length of a vector or the norm of a vector. Um, you might remember that we had a session about distances a while ago, uh, and um, Prisma told us about uh, different uh, definitions of distance. Um, but today I'm using Pythagoras. Okay, um, these give me some equations for how x and a and b change over time. I'm a little bit short on time today. I've got 10 minutes to try and talk to you about what I did next. So in principle, this is three differential equations for three variables, x, a, and b. They're vector variables, but we can deal with that. If you like, you can think of it as six equations for the components, but I'd like to think of it as three equations. Uh, there, there you go, that was it. <laughs> yeah, Prisma, I was trying to refer to your session on purpose. Um, <laughs> why not use the term absolute modulus for this rather than modulus? Uh, uh, habits, old habits die hard. I'm gonna try really hard to say absolute value. Abs, sorry. Oh, magnitude, yeah, okay. Everyone prefers words other than the word I've used. Sorry, chat. Uh, is it helpful to split up the x and a in the derivative to sub in? Yes, there we go. Yes, helpful to split up the x and a. This this person knows where I'm going. This is lovely. Chat always seems to know where I'm going, but especially now. You can do some subtraction. <laughs> so this implies that d by t of a is, if I subtract off this one, b over mod, b over b over the absolute value of b minus a over the absolute value of a for the uh, equation, putting these all together. And there's something similar going on for the derivative of b, um, which is going to be minus vector b divided by mod b minus vector a divided by mod a. Um, I realise that I'm using way too many vectors and I'm throwing way too much stuff at you. This is genuinely how I like to think about problems. Um, I realise that makes me seem a bit weird. Uh, this is quite nice now because these two equations down the bottom uh, just involve a and b. So the complicated three equation system, actually I could just think about these as two not terrible equations for how the vectors a and b change. And then I'm losing some information because if I'm not thinking about x, I'm not thinking about where the parallelogram is, uh, I'm thinking about the, the side, side length of the parallelogram, that's something I'm interested in. Call it length lol. Ah, Jack's with me. Should I learn Python just to code this? Um, if you are going to learn Python anyway, if you've always thought it'd be nice to give some of my maths to my computer so that instead of drawing things with a pencil, I could just get my computer to do them. And I should say that typing that code to get the computer to draw it, typing the code took me about the same amount of time as drawing the picture. So <laughs> in some sense, the picture was a complete waste of time. I should have just coded it from scratch. Um, if you were thinking about learning to code anyway, I think this is a nice problem to code up um, because you get something pretty at the end um, and along the way you learn about getting your computer to do what you tell it, to add numbers together, to maybe, you know, do a for loop, and also to draw stuff. Drawing stuff is the hardest one out of all of those. Um, yeah, how's the derivative of x plus a something to do with b? Well, I was thinking about this dog over here, at x plus a, and I was thinking about how its motion is something to do with this side of the parallelogram. This side of the parallelogram is the vector b. So just like over here, I was thinking about the dog at x, moving to do with the vector a. Over here I was thinking about the, the dog at x plus a, it moves to do with the vector b. It's probably, uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't write down an equation for x, x plus a plus b, because I've already got enough equations for x and a and b. I could write down one, it's minus a over a. Do you want that one? Um, it's kind of like just the sum of the other ones minus the first one twice. Um, <laughs> right, okay, we've got down to two equations. Um, I'm going to, oh, am I going to skip some details? No, never skip the details. Never skip the details. The reason I wanted to do this with vectors is because I wanted to think about the lengths of the sides of this parallelogram, the distances between the dogs. Um, if you just write down the positions, then distance is quite a hard thing to think about. It involves all these square root of x squared plus y squared, or, or worse, the distance between two dogs is like the square root of <gasps> x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. Close close the square bracket. Oh my word, horrible expression. Distance is quite hard in components. Um, 
Don't skip them. Okay, what do you want me to not skip, Harriet? Um, um, distance is quite hard with components, um, but distance is quite easy with the vectors. And um, because with vectors we have something called the dot product, right? That the length squared of a vector is just a dot producted with itself. Um, dot product or scalar product. Um, if you haven't learned this in school yet, um, then oh my word, at some point you're going to learn about scalar product and it will change your life. You will start liking vectors. Um, it gives you this nice expression for what the length of a vector is, um, which is quite good. Um, and you also have brilliant facts, like if you have two vectors, a and b, then that's equal to the length of a times the length of b times cos theta for the angle in between them, theta in my picture, um, the angle in between them. That's just such a good fact. It relates together the angle between uh, between uh, two, two vectors in terms of this very simple object to do with, uh, sort of a way to multiply vectors together. Um, didn't know dot product? Cool, right, well, we're gonna learn. Ah, oh, skipping the details. Okay, yeah, we're not skipping details. We're doing it, it's happening. Um, I'm full of regret, uh, but I've only got about five minutes, so what's the worst thing that could happen? My internet could go out at any moment just before I do the good bit. Um, okay, I'm interested in lengths, which is something like a dot a. Um, I'm interested in whether those lengths go to zero. Um, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and talk about the way that the length changes with time. Hold on, we're going to get there, it's going to be great. I'm going to take this expression, the modulus of a squared, the length of a squared, I will learn, equals a dot a, and I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to time. Um, this is probably too much, oh my word. I'm aware most people are watching in year 12, and you maybe haven't learned about dot product yet. Um, Definitely haven't learned how to do this next bit, but that's okay. Um, time derivative of anything squared is two times that thing times the time derivative of just itself. Oh my word, that's the chain rule. We did do a previous episode on the chain rule, but it was about a year ago. Um, go and find the episode on the chain rule for where does that come from when I do the time derivative. Over here, I get this, which you're just going to have to trust me that when I t do the time derivative of this thing, differentiating both sides with respect to time, I get this brilliant relationship, which relates together on the left, the rate of change of the length of a, the thing that I'm interested in, and on the right, something to do with vectors dotted together, in terms of, look here, the time derivative of the vector a, um, which I've got a rule about, I'm ready to go with my rule over there. Um, it's gonna be so good. Um, this gives me some amazing stuff that simplifies really nicely. Um, I'm going to forget about the factors of 2, and I'm going to write d by d a, this thing over here. Forget the 2s. Um, this time derivative of the vector a is mod b over the length of b minus a over the length of a, all dotted with the vector a on the, on the outside. This is not too bad at all. Um, so if I dot this inwards, I get a dot b uh, over here over the length of b minus a dot a over the length of a. This is not too bad at all because I have a rule for what a dot b is. It's the length of a times the length of b times cos theta. It's been divided by the length of b, so I'm going to write down this. Uh, and over here, I've got a rule for what a dot a is. It's, it's the length of a squared, so this term is just the length of a. And now my equation is lovely. It says length of a times thing I'm really interested in, the time derivative of the length of a, is equal to length of a times cos theta minus length of a. Oh, I can divide through by uh, the length of a, and I'll get down to thing that I'm really interested in, the time derivative of the length of a is just equal to cos theta minus one. Oh, isn't that lovely? Um, I did that really fast because, oh, timing, um, really fast, and also because I didn't need you to understand any of it. Um, there's some vector calculus way that rather than thinking about square roots and squares of distances, um, you can just think about these vector dot products and they're lovely. They let you do everything much faster and get down to really nice truths like this one. Um, similarly, it turns out that, oh, do I have time for this? Should be underlining, underlining my vectors, okay. Ha ha ha. B, so similar rule. Um, I'm gonna dot this one with B for a similar rule. I'll get minus mod B, uh, minus mod b minus so same sort of same sort of thing accelerating through not showing you any of the details of the working out uh, so start with b dot b equals mod b squared differentiate both sides divide by two mess around a little bit 
and you get a very similar expression, minus one minus cos theta for the way that the length of B, excuse me, the length of B changes. Um, there we go. So we've got this beautiful rule now. The length of A changes like this, cos theta minus one. The length of B changes like minus one minus cos theta. There's just one problem. I don't know what theta is. Um, theta is changing as the parallelogram changes. Um, it's satisfying its own horrible differential equation for how that angle flattens as those four dogs run around in a parallelogram shape that compresses down. But what I can do is I can add these two equations together. I can take this one for the length of A and that one for the length of B and I can add them together. If I, if I add together two copies of each, that tells me something about the perimeter of the parallelogram. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So I can't integrate because I don't know theta. The perimeter is two times the length of A plus two times the length of B. Um, look, at, look at the parallelogram one more time to convince yourself. It goes A, B, A, B around the outside. So if I add together those lengths, I get the perimeter. But I've now got this beautiful relationship that the time derivative of that is just going to be, well, there's a cos theta, a minus cos theta, another cos theta, a minus cos theta. This is just minus 4. So that says the perimeter. I know what it starts off as. It starts off as the perimeter of the rectangle. The time derivative is just minus 4. It says the perimeter comes down at the rate of 4 uh, units per unit time, which means that in a finite amount of time that I can predict, the perimeter will hit 0. All the dogs will be in the middle after a time original perimeter divided by 4. That's the final answer. All the dogs smashed together in this predictable time. Um, uh, this is true for the square. This gives you an exact answer for how long it takes for the um, the, the dogs to hit the middle in a square. Um, it's also similar to the answer for a triangle. Um, in all those cases, like a pentagon or something, theta was fixed. Um, for your nice regular shapes, theta is fixed. Um, for the parallelogram case, um, theta changes, but you can get it to cancel out of the equation for the perimeter. Um, so, really fast at the end there, um, but the punchline is that all the dogs reach the center in something like the amount of time you would expect based on the square case. Um, loads of questions along the way, so do the dogs meet each other in pairs along the way? Um, does theta actually get down to zero? What, what does the solution to these different but I haven't solved them, I've just sort of added them together. What's the solution actually like? Who let the dogs out? These are all questions that we should ask ourselves in the coming days and weeks. <laughs> Thanks, chat. Right, okay. Um, yeah, bit of Q&A, bit of, bit of chat. That's the end of the vector calculus, you'll be pleased to know. Um, thanks for joining in. I would really like to see if you um, if you try this at home, if you try your own shape, um, either on pen, paper and pencil, or if you write some code and you have some pretty pictures, um, I would love to include them on the stream next week. Um, if you send stuff to the email address at the bottom of the screen, there is a chance that we will show it on the show. Um, if you're happy for us to do that, um, if we have your permission. Um, so if you try this at home, either drawing stuff like you know how to draw a pentagon and you want to try five dogs, um, or if you try something else, then uh, have a go at that. Obviously, if you have exams or something like that, like this person in the test, uh, this person in chat with their test tomorrow, and Magnus, I remember, um, best of luck with your tests and everything instead. Um, please revise for your tests if you have them. Um, but if you want to draw some spirally pictures, then that's going in it as well. If you do it in a hyperbolic space, then, you know, let me know. Alfie's going to do it on paper and then in code. That's actually, I did it the other way around. So, <laughs> there we go. Okay, quick Q&A. Um, thank you very much, Prisma. I don't know if you have to run off now. Um, if you have to run off, then thanks, Prisma. Bye. Um, uh, see you around this way. I'm going to ask questions a little bit. I might go back to random triangles again, because that was quite good. I might try and... And that thing about four points in the circle. So I did a little bit of Q&A. Uh, we're going to keep going until either... My internet dies, or my computer dies, or we run out of questions, or it becomes dinner time. Let's see. Right. Oh, and I want to advertise two streams. Two streams to advertise. Oh, I said I'd do ads. Ads, ads, ads. Right, two ads, really quickly. Um, other things you might like. Um, uh, Simon Singh, famous author Simon Singh, is launching uh, a new maths live stream. If you like this one, then you'll probably like that one as well, or even more, who knows. Um, they're streaming on Mondays. Um, it's with Kyle D. Evans, who is a stand-up uh, comedian and maths teacher. Um, if you've ever seen this show and thought, oh, 
I just wish James was funny, and then if you want to see a show like this one but with somebody funny, uh, then and Kyle's there, funny and clever and uh, handsome. Uh, and also <laughs> hosting, I think, also hosting uh, Simon Singh, I think, is there for some or all of them, and also Junaid Mabeen, who is a countdown champion. Uh, so, you know, we've got competition now. Uh, there's a math stream on Mondays over there on the Parallel Project for you to check out. Um, other streams have always been available, but are now even more so available. Um, and people have been asking for this for a while. Um, uh, there's a physics live stream now as well. Uh, my friends in the physics department, with some help from engineering, are doing a physics stream on Tuesdays, starting in a couple of weeks. Um, if you've got friends who are interested in physics, or if you're interested in physics, um, especially if you're thinking about the physics aptitude test, which is the admissions test for physics, engineering, uh, material science at Oxford, um, hey, there's a sort of Pat's live stream for you. Um, I think it would be really funny if people at these other events, yeah, I've read Fermat's last theorem, the book as well. Um, I think it'd be really funny if people did that event as well as this one. Do people say learn on that one? We'll see. Okay, okay. Um, will I be at the open day in September? Yes, very much so. Um, I am organising stuff. Uh, it's not just me, but I'm also doing things. Right, okay. Let's get rid of this advert. It's just astonishing. This is this is amazing. This is like a couple of years ago during uh, lockdown, three blue, one brown did a live stream as well. Um, I think they're not doing it anymore, but uh, that was that was happening over there. Yes, yeah, so the physics live stream is it actually going to involve some maths skills for physics in there as well. So I'm quite interested. Um, can you put Roblox Studio due to that's the name? Go for it. I mean, you're doing if you're doing vector three D stuff, that sounds quite interesting. Um, I wouldn't expect all of your interviewers or people reading your personal statement to have heard of Roblox. I mean, I have, but um, there's a way to explain that, right? Where you don't really explain Roblox, you explain writing code and stuff, because it's actually quite fun. Uh, yeah, we all want the three blue plus Max Club collaboration in the same way that Tiny Fish would like to be friends with Big Fish. Um, right. Uh, I am not, so yeah, hang on a minute, here we go. Um, I am not related to the Parallel Circle. I just saw it on Twitter and I thought you would like it. Um, it's nothing to do with me. Um, best way to plot this using online Python compilers? Oh gosh, I don't know how to do matplotlib online. There's a question about online stuff. Uh, that's uh, maybe... I don't know how to do Python online. I've got an executable thing. Uh, someone saw me in May. How can a circle be parallel? Yeah, go and ask that in. No, don't, don't. I mean, everyone should be nice to them, but this has got to be top question, right? Math circles on the parallel project, really? Um, good times. No, it's going to be really good fun. I might come along too. Am I busy on Mondays? I'll try and work out if I can make it. Oh, good times. Um, is it possible to have done too much maths? Um, how much do you benefit from teaching? And we're looking for people who do well on the maths course, right? Um, if you've already done a university level course, then it's probably not a good use of your time to do another equivalent one. Um, if you've already done, well, multiple variable cat, you're talking about the first year, linear algebra, different analysis, and rich equations. Um, if you've done stuff in the first year, that's, I think, still a, still a strength. I mean, you're going to repeat stuff. If you study at Oxford, you're going to learn it again. Um, so that might not be, it's not something I recommend that people, people do from scratch to try and get a year ahead before they do the same year again. Um, but I wouldn't call it a disadvantage. Cool. Um, somebody asks, I'm not sure whether for maths or for maths and statistics. Um, same first year. Uh, so the content is exactly the same in the first year uh, for the first year of those courses at Oxford. Um, so no reason there. Um, later on in the course, if you're on the maths and stats course, you get access to more statistics options, um, including some machine learning stuff that's very popular. Um, so if you're interested, or you think you might be interested in that later on, then go for it. Um, sometimes people switch between the two while they're on the course. It's not currently an automatic process to switch between them, uh, but it's something that some people in the past have uh, negotiated with their college. Actually, quite a few people have negotiated that each year with their colleges. Um, ah, Roy's already been to the sessions. Great, 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 great. Okay. Uh, they're doing different sessions for, it's like three different live streams. Um, uh, I don't know if Simon Singh is going to be live three times every week, but we'll find out. Um, 
three different light streams for different year groups. That was very exciting. Um, good, okay. Um, you can choose between math and stats based on how much stats you want to do, and for the first year at least, it definitely doesn't matter. Um, and it's the same sort of admission standard, so that's all the same. Uh, what does this thing mean? Uh, oh, is it a good thing to start year 13 for the math now that I finished AS level? So I'm teaching myself. I, if you're teaching yourself, then you're quite self-motivated, I guess. Um, in which case, year 13 for the maths, I think you'll like it for the same reasons. Alfie, you said you were about to apply for Oxford. That means I think you're probably between year 12 and year 13. I think that means that you are sort of on track with other people who are learning further maths. In which case, hey, it sounds like you've done about half of further maths in about a year. Other half of further maths in the next year. I mean, if you want to. Uh, I sometimes link to some playlists, right, from AMSP of kind of revision videos. Um, the AMSP have other resources. If you're based in England, um, the AMSP, AMSP, Advanced Math Support Program, have other other resources available for you to learn further maths. Uh, try and find out if your school or college can help you out. Um, which college am I based at? I currently do some teaching for New College, um, which is one of the colleges, um, but I've previously taught for Lincoln College and a little bit for St Edmund Hall, just a tiny bit. Um, do, we don't do maths with the year abroad at Oxford, sorry. Um, it's one of those ones where the answer is really easy, but also it feels disappointing, right? Sorry. Um, uh, recommending map prep resources if you've done the past papers and watched, and you're watching the live streams. That's what the live stream is. Um, Step is a very different style. That's why I recommend it, because I think it shows you different, um, different problems to look at. Um, just revising school maths. Because Matt only does half of your syllabus, right? Matt does it, well, only does half of the syllabus. So there's other maths that you know that you could be getting good at, um, like how athletes need to make sure that they train both arms to do athletics. I should really stick to metaphors that I know about. Um, <laughs> athletes train both arms, um, unless they're javelin throwers, I think. But it's probably good to train both arms to get good at both sorts of maths. Maths that's on Matt and also maths that's not on, not on Matt. And I think there's some transferable skill that if you get good at the other sort of maths as well that's not on maths, then maybe that helps you a little bit as well. Uh, somebody would like me to rate binary out of two. Um, and I rate binary uh, three out of two, one one. Uh, it's, it's, this is, I think this is a recommendation for people to look at. Sorry, I'm now reading everything. Um, what's Lincoln College like? Oh, it's nice. Um, it's very central. It's quite small, lots of the Oxford colleges are small, um, Lincoln's, I guess, one of the small ones, it's a very nice library. Um, I thought the students were lovely um, when I taught them a few years ago. Uh, for, I taught some of their, what did I teach? I taught math, I taught math skills to some of their physics students. Ah, good times. Um, yeah, uh, one of their people is, yeah, anyway, one of their people does lots of openly stuff with me. Um, IB scores and, IB scores is, IB scores is good. Um, we think IB is similar preparation to A-level, um, so other people are applying A-levels. Um, IELTS is English language, um, which, yeah, we're, we're looking at. Um, but, yeah, uh, a good way to say if your application could be competitive is to look at Matt's past papers. If you found, find the Matt's past papers on my website, well, not my website, but the, the Oxford website, um, there's a table of past papers and average scores. Um, Learn those topics, don't wait. Yeah, oh, I just want to learn those topics. Okay, so looking at topics a little bit and learning a bit, yeah, it's sort of, it's sort of good um, that you're interested. Um, don't feel that you have to like get a textbook, read all the textbook, get ahead with university math. As I say, if you come to university, you will learn it at some point. Half the syllabus. Oh yeah, um, so like half the syllabus plus series. Yeah, okay, plus, plus the bit with stars at the bottom of the syllabus. If you've seen the syllabus, you know what I mean. Uh, what is... Hang on, let's have a look at a link before I approve a link. Uh, is this like a hard maths test? Oh, why have I clicked on a random PDF link? This feels bad. Oh my word. What have I opened? Approving chat messages is really fun. Well, I'm just gonna approve this and see what happens. Uh, what is IEEE 754, asks somebody, and they link to a standard. Oh, I don't understand this question. It's something to do with floating point arithmetic, possibly. Um, somebody's done Kangaroo Senior, sounds fun. Um, it's a maths competition, right? Uh, you do some maths questions. If you enjoy doing those maths questions and it made you want to study maths at university, then hey, sounds, sounds relevant. Um, if it made you good at solving maths problems, because now you've solved some maths problems, then well, go for it. Um, factors for choosing colleges. Um, some people like to think about the accommodation, um, the location, uh, whether it's got 
particular special facilities that they're interested in. Um, you can't really pick based on maths because they will have access to the same maths. Famous library, uh, famous library at Oxford is called the Bodleian. Is that cheating on a pub quiz? If I, uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, A-levels from first principles, no prior GCSE knowledge. Um, you'll be okay um, because you probably do have some prior GCSE knowledge or equivalent. Um, you'll need to know about quadratic formulas. That's the main one. Um, if you know about quadratic formulas, then you kind of already do have some GCSE level knowledge, so you'll be all right. How can I practice math tests? Um, we've got about 14 years of past papers on the website, plus in August this live stream turns into the maths live stream where it's me again, but I only talk about math questions. I've left this on the screen all the way through just because I'm really happy with it. I think it's really good. Um, I think there's a paper that does this from the 1950s, but I can't find a copy of the paper to check what's in it. Um, it's really annoying. Uh, the paper's from 1959. Oh, I've forgotten the author name, uh, about Curves of Pursuit on Rectangles, uh, but I can't find a copy of it, so I can't check what's in it. Um, which map papers are too old? Um, the map papers that are too old, um, ones before 2007 are very weird. Um, the ones since then, uh, there are notes in the uh, on the map website, there are some notes on which questions are on a different specification. Um, if you go to the map website, which I've called my website by mistake there because it's sort of, sort of me, uh, let's try and load that. That's a sign that my internet's going. Oh, are we out? Are we good? There we go. Oh, a little bit weird here. Um, math test. Um, halfway down, there's this table of papers. Um, you've got some work solutions, average scores. Uh, the notes have notes about which questions are no longer on the syllabus, which questions are no longer appropriate. Um, so over there. Um, Good way to generate interesting problems to explore that haven't already got no solutions. Um, I've been trying to do that all term here with uh, coming up with different um, coming up with different variations on existing things. Um, this is the thing that Newton said, right, about standing on the shoulders of giants to take something that other people have done and to sort of remix it or do something differently. Um, I think that's probably the best advice I can give you to adapt rather than inventing from new things. As someone says, how are you, James? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, I'm doing well. Um, I was not very well for the last couple of weeks, but I'm doing a bit better. I, I'm aware that I'm really behind on uh, further reading for this, which is stressing me out a little bit. That For the last three weeks, I've promised some further reading and I've not delivered. And now we've got this one as well, so four weeks. Um, I currently don't have further reading, plus six from last term. Uh, that stresses me out a little bit. Uh, that is a link to the past papers. Oh, that's a link to the subset. So that's a link to, in particular, that table of past papers, I think. Um, Oh, uh, Xenos Paradox was here, and there's a recommendation to watch the Infinity Machines video, which I'm going to try and link to in chat. Um, this has become quite a general, oh, it's quite nice. Um, I wonder if anyone's going to beat me to it. I've got a head start because of lag. Lag is this thing where, yes, I found it. I'm copying it, I'm copying it. Get to chat, get to chat, get back to chat. Did I win? I didn't say anything about what it was. I was too excited to post post in chat. And I think my I think my internet's gone. I think I've gone. Might have gone. Uh, good. Cool. Uh, nothing's working. Oh, there it goes. It's just appeared. Ah, oh, timing delay. Uh, the, de the delay is now massively delayed because I uh, am also doing the chat moderation. <laughs> Things have gone pretty bad just now. Um, my link did get moderated even though I posted it, which is why it's just appeared. There we go. I promise that's not a rig roll. That is a link to an interesting video about math and philosophy. Um, if you're watching uh, the replay and you want that link, um, instead of copying it out, you could search this YouTube channel that you're on, click on the channel and scroll back or search through for Infinity Machines. It's called Infinity and Infinity Machines. It's a really good video. How many views has that got? Oh, it's got under a thousand views at the moment, which is, should have more views. Okay, good stuff. Right, I think my internet might be about to break, um, so I might wrap up there. It might have already broken. I might be saying this to nobody. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Um, let's see. Yeah, we're, we're, we're losing it. We're getting error, error messages from YouTube. It's all coming down around my ears. Um, I think it's time to wrap up the live stream and say, chat's been a pleasure. Um, hope you can hope you can put hope you can do your own version of pursuit curves. 
the Corpus Curves. Further reading will appear at some point, maybe. <laughs> but at some point, maybe, uh, to give you some pretty pictures and some links to, let's be honest, a link to the Wikipedia page um, for a, a link to the Wikipedia page for Pursuit Curves. Um, and I will see you in almost a week. Uh, have a nice week. I'm distracted by chat as well. What emoji is that? Is that like person with like things on their head? Anyway, um, I am not allowed to write your UCAS reference and I'm not allowed to be your like supervisor guru for that in there. Thanks for coming along, Roy. Thanks for hanging out for a slightly weird bit at the end. Would I do a boxing match with a maths tutor from Cambridge? Fun fact about how maths used to work. <laughs> Mathematicians, um, hundreds of years ago, used to challenge each other to duels, um, to settle things by having a fight. Um, we don't do that anymore. Um, so, no, I'm not going to fight a tutor at Cambridge. And on that note... <laughs> oh, I love chat. Right. Good super career leaders, just do more math problems, do, do other stuff, do, do other things, you'll be fine. Do other things about that. Um, good, good, good. Other, anything else you can do that involves maths a little bit, but funny about more stuff outside the classroom. And you're good. Right, bye Alfie. Okay, take care everyone. We are getting some weird data out of YouTube and we are going to call it there for real this time. Bye everyone. <laughs> Isn't that how Gauss died lol, says someone in chat. Amazing stuff. <laughs> bye.